Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys, we're going to be jumping down into the world of Cardano's ADA, taking a look at what's been going on most recently and what we think is likely to happen next. As I get into the video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't joined us in Discord yet, check it out, linked in the description down below. I don't think you'll regret it. Let's make a start with this one though. So Cardano paired up with USDT on the hourly chart and Binance is the data source. Uh, we're actually going to be taking a look at three different things here for Cardano. One, we'll have this chart. This is going to be uh, taking a look at Elliott Wave Theory on Cardano's ADA. We'll have this one, which we're going to be looking at uh, some bullish setups on uh, some kind of moving average. We're going to be taking a look at those. And then, of course, we'll be taking a look at smart money concepts as well and see whether or not we get continuity between these charts. So let's start things off with the Cardano ADA um, on Elliott Wave Theory on what's going on on here. So we can see that we had this break to the upside. We can also see that we did enter into this high range. This is the range that we had uh, marked up between 41.49 and 43.3. Uh, it's been up there for quite some time. We narrowly missed it over here in early Feb. And now we're up here just a few days later, a couple of weeks later, right? So we can kind of see that we peaked into this area. This area uh, was known as a supply zone basically where the sellers are um, and we've kind of been talking about this for quite a bit of time but we did think that maybe we were going to deviate away from it we narrowly missed it so initially i was thinking uh, that we were doing something like this and we we're just going to go down in a three wave correction um, and then taking a look at it at the moment it looks like we've done that three wave correction right here here and here and so we're done we also narrowly missed this low uh, you can kind of see it right in here you can see that we're estimating a low uh, between 34.13 and 34.45 uh, we narrowly missed that one on the last video and yeah now we're back up in this supply range okay now we've hit it this time uh, this is where the sellers are however uh, i don't think we are done just yet i still think there's a bit more progression to the upside to be had here before we can kind of pull this uh basically kind of conclude that it's done and dusted. Now, the moves to the upside are quite interesting because this is a real minor correction here. There's a couple of things that this can be. Uh, the first thing that we should probably consider, uh, considering that we've had a really big corrective structure coming up here, it's not trend based, it's just corrective. Uh, and we've kind of marked this up as a wave B, right? With our wave A being at 44 cent. Now, if we go ahead and uh, go higher than 44 cent, then of course we can rule that out as done. And we can probably say that this is our C wave done at this low point and yeah we can kind of then talk about what things look like after that that being said at the moment with that 44 cents still being intact we can talk about coming down just a fraction lower than the existing lows and i had that scoped out at 22.23 that i've been talking about for months um, we narrowly missed that as well at uh, 23.90 approximately down here. So you can see we've got very, very close, but not quite there. Um, and then we started to have this swing trade up, right? So we've got a fantastic swing trade. We've been able to great, grab some great profits here. But that being said, we can't get too carried away thinking that we're in a bullish market until we kind of uh, finish things off. So back to what I was saying, we have this kind of corrective structure coming up. We've narrowly missed our supply range at the start with. We then pulled down in three and now we're going up. What also appears to be a three wave structure. It doesn't look like we have a good count in here. One, two, three, four, possibly possibly maybe we end up with five but it's a bit too soon to know for certain um we don't have a good wave two down here and um, so like really loosely we would say one two uh three four and then overextend on five and this pull to the downside at the moment is creating or getting very very close to um to kind of pulling back down in a really significant way uh i could argue that that might be the start of a, a bigger correction uh something to this effect maybe um but it's too soon to know so i'm gonna kind of just wait and see how that kind of goes now a five wave move to the upside is of interest to me. Uh, it's of interest to me because it would mean that potentially we're starting a trend move to the upside. A trend structure is described as a five, three, five, three, five structure, right? Um, so basically that is what is known as an impulsive five wave structure. There's many different five wave structures, but it's only really the impulsive ones that decide trends or are basically uh, are trends right so when we think about this being a five wave structure as i had that one two kind of three four and five all of that is just a wave one potentially all right it means you come down into a wave two you go up into a three four and five right so you end up with that impulsive structure of which when you start zooming out into the larger time frames that becomes a wave one uh, and so forth so when we start thinking about this being a five wave move then you know we can't we, we kind of start thinking maybe we're going to be starting to trend to the upside however 
the momentum indicator, the oscillator down here at the bottom, doesn't really give us that kind of bullish sentiment just yet. I still think we've got some momentum to the upside, and therefore this could just be a zigzag pattern, and a zigzag pattern would potentially be um, just kind of bearish, and it would just basically be a correction that's done and dusted. Now, the alternative here is that this is just going to be a corrective structure, and we're actually in a flat correction um, and again we've peaked up higher here so a flat correction would be an a down a b up and then a c coming down lower it looks almost like an expanding or a megaphone based pan if you follow traditional kind of structures but nonetheless it is what it is so following this uh, allows us to think that we have that potential move to the upside still now if i take a look at the oscillator we can see that we're oversold on the hourly we can see that we're coming down on the four hourly but we're still overbought on the eight hour we're overbought i believe on the 12 16 20 and we're heading up to overbought on the daily so i still think we've got some momentum specifically around the one hour four hour and daily charts okay so i still think we're going to have some moves to the upside let me go into that okay so i still think we're going to potentially push up higher and if we do breach the 44 that's fine that's not a problem uh, we'll zoom out we'll pay attention to the bigger macros and this is a big reset it basically allows us to look at this as a wxy and this could just be an x and a z to come down okay so uh, one of the biggest things I've been talking about when it comes to uh, Cardano's ADA is the triple zigzag threat. The triple zigzag threat um, essentially uh, is basically down here actually. We have a W, X, and Y right in there, which is basically a double zigzag pattern. Uh, and that's what took us down low because I was I was hoping to find support at around the 27 and a half cent, but instead we came down to 23 and it was because of the double zigzag. Now going up higher than 44 cent basically means that we cannot do a W, X, Y, X, and Z, a triple zigzag. So that would put that to bed. But the bigger issue would be that actually what we'd end up doing is a W, X, Y, Oh, let me get the right one. Uh, this one. Uh, it'll be a W, X, Y, X, and Z. And you end up with that reset potentially taking us down deeper than we would have really wanted, which basically puts us right in this sweet spot between 15.46 and 22.23. I reckon we'll be filling this particular gap down here if this particular scenario does play out. So the idea of moving up higher is great, but we would really, if we wanted to prevent a W, X, Y, X, Z scenario, have to come up higher than 59.48 cents. It's not impossible, but it's bit of a stretch target considering we're only at 40 and we're heavily overbought on the weekly and heading to overbought on the daily for example so those macro level time frames don't give us the idea that there's a lot of momentum to take us above that kind of 59.48 cent range to prevent ourselves from having a wxyxz kind of scenario playing out here at the bottom of which of course if we zoom out even further we can then argue that we're actually in something to this effect even higher in the price chart over here w x y x and z and all we're really doing is kind of working our way and teasing our way down there's a lot of bearish things and bearish issues that i have with the price action of cardano um, but again that's all short-term views i think that we are in some pretty good pricing i do think the prices will naturally want to come down and get corrected whether that is a new low low or not um, but i think there's going to be some fantastic opportunities to dollar cost average into cardano uh, back down at these lows that we were talking about before right as i know the community did a lot of dollar cost averaging into cardano around the 23 cents 24 cents and took advantage of this fantastic swing or trade opportunity and i think those opportunities are going to come once again so it's just a matter of being patient with this one and letting it kind of play out let's move on though let's talk about what's potentially having a, a setup here on cardano ada so this is the daily chart we can see that we have this uh, hidden bullish divergence okay and we actually pulled down and now we're starting to see that kind of move upwards we found support on the 50 moving average and it looks like the 50 moving average the yellow line is looking to cross above the 200 moving average the the light blue line essentially that would be deemed as a golden cross and you know we've seen this with bitcoin a couple of times but basically essentially what it will do is it'll kind of create a bit of fomo around bit uh, around ada for example and see if it will push up now the issue that we have here is the last couple of uh crosses both bullish and bearish um, have actually gone in the opposite directions when it comes to bitcoin so bitcoin had a golden cross and price re reacted negatively and went down and then bitcoin on its weekly time frame had a death cross and reacted positively and took price up so they're almost doing the opposite so now so bear in mind that you might expect really good positive uh, price action when these two lines cross over the next week or so 
you might actually see the opposite and that's because there's a lot of manipulation going on in the background which then brings me on to the uh, smart money concepts we're trying paying attention to what the institutional players are doing when it comes to not only cardano bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies is to focus in on the smart money concept of how they actually uh, approach the space now i'm using the smart money concepts by lux algo indicator in trading view it draws a lot of this stuff on here for you I made some adjustments. I did a course on this as well. You can check that out below at the thecheekyschool.com. Um, but I'm going to just kind of walk you through what's going on here with Cardano ADA, because really what we're interested in is understanding the imbalance that is created from an institutional participant. Okay, that's basically a big money coming in and moving the price. We can see down here we have a couple of imbalances most recently when it comes to ADA. Okay, so we can see right in here we have these green areas at the moment. Okay, these are created from an imbalance in the order books. Okay, so basically buyers have come along, uh, institutional buyers have come along, placed their buy orders, and they've basically taken all the liquidity that there's no selling activity happening inside these little green blocks here okay that means that price has just rapidly moved up to where the sellers are which happen to be just above these green areas okay now what's happening here is basically once that imbalance is created the institutional player has to stop buying or selling because there's no liquidity there so they then allow retail investors to kind of gravitate the price back towards these zones where the imbalances were and then they find more liquidity and take the price in the direction that they want to again okay so in the case of cardano we still have here four imbalances and price loves to come back down to these imbalances um it's kind of like one of the principles behind the liquidity hunting within um within the charts right so they call these things not only imbalances but also commonly known as a fair value gap and fair value gaps typically do like to get hit and get filled so at the moment we have a couple of interesting zones here on our four hour chart that are telling us that price is probably going to have to gravitate back down towards some of these key levels okay so now we know that we've kind of got these imbalances that have occurred this basically means that there are some large funds coming in here and pushing the price of ADA to the upside and we'd have to question who it is and why they're doing it we don't really know but we can kind of ascertain that considering volume is low it's going to obviously be something to do with market makers as the people who are benefiting the most are going to be the liquidity hunters the institutions the market makers and so forth right so the other thing that's important to note when it comes to smart money concepts is the change of characters and of course most recently here on ADA we've had a break of structure as well okay so the change of character basically tells us that we finished one trend to the downside in this particular case we were trending down with a break of structure break of structure break of structure and now we've got a change of character we changed from our downward price action which took us down at that 23 and we broke up right so as soon as we broke this level we had a change of character we obviously came back down into but didn't fully fill but we came back down into the imbalance that took us above this change of character and then we start to come on up we see a negative uh, minor change of character here but it didn't stick and also some negative uh, break of structures and change of uh, change of characters in here but nothing really stuck to these kind of bigger macros you can see that we also got this re recent break of structure as we recently a few hours ago just broke above this high but we have got all of these order blocks up here okay this red area is all sellers and now we've got a strong Strong high at the moment indicating that this is highly likely to be a rejection point from a smart money concepts point of view which leads me to think are we actually going to be moving down into filling this little imbalance down here before we actually start gravitating back upwards again now equilibrium is a 50 percent level between the premium area and the discounted area and again price loves to come down here so if we were to come down into this low area and break this low then we're probably going to get another change of character to the downside and we might actually start thinking about filling this area which currently has some buyers in it this area here that has buyers in it and this area down here that has buyers in it this is a discounted range though this is ultimately where most of the value is going to be had so at some point price might actually gravitate that back down towards this discounted range that's going to be quite a way off i don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon but you know it's on the radar and we should kind of be aware of it so when it comes to smart money concepts here we can see that we've got all these imbalances that are likely to kind of get filled in due course it can take weeks to play out though so i don't think that's going to happen instantly um, and of course we positively we've got this break of structure so it does indicate that we have that possible idea of a break to the upside but there is a lot of selling pressure up here um, and obviously a weak high at the moment which does actually tell us that we are potentially 
potentially thinking about a move upwards there. So I think that was actually a strong high a second ago, I think I said, but it's actually a weak high, which tells us that we are probably going to come up into this range of setting, which would then align to our kind of fifth wave expectations with our Elliott Wave theory stuff. Um, and all that kind of stuff so one of those we'll pay attention to it we'll see how it kind of goes but for now I, my expectations are we should have a slight cool off maybe a push to the upside on the smaller time frame and bring this up into our hourly um as we kind of think about just tapping into that range uh up here so it's possible that we have completed this to be fair uh, as i said earlier the one two kind of three four and five it's possible that that is done but unless of course we're doing a zigzag pattern here which a zigzag pattern would be if i can click the thing there we go uh come down briefly maybe fill in the uh area just down here and then come back to doing another five wave move to the upside and come back into our supply range which happens to also coincide basically with this selling area on the smart money concept so essentially if i was to kind of think about this um overall we would be thinking to pull this into the hourly or let this load up on the hourly chart we'll probably see a few more imbalances here let's just uh, give it a second to load there we go um we would be taking a look at this structure and think to ourselves okay we've had this kind of five wave structure to the upside here uh, we can see the imbalances and where they currently sit you can kind of see that we're about to touch this one we've got these two for example we look at this as a five wave structure as i just drew out on the other chart we then come down in three waves uh which would basically put us back down into this range potentially we do something like this come back down here we then go up into our next kind of five wave structure and you know we're done at that point okay uh, so one of those we'll keep close eye on it we'll see how it kind of goes but that's kind of where my mind is at at the moment when it comes to um you know ada and where i think it's likely to go in the next kind of uh, few days or so uh, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below if you found this useful and informative smash that like button i do appreciate that if you're new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe and guys i'll catch you all in the next one